Well, good morning, my friends. The bed is made because my little buddy isn't here to lay all over it. He spent the night with Pollyanna last night, so it's a quiet house here until he gets home. Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. I hope you're feeling well today. I know I am. I woke up with a great smile on my face, looked outside, the sun was out. It's going to be a great day. I'm waiting on something in the mail, and who knows when that could be. I learned last week when I was waiting on that camera that, you know, you kind of have to hang around. I need to have my phone handy in case it says that I missed the delivery so I can track this guy down. But I really want this today because we have a big week coming up and I want to make sure I get it today. Then we're going to take off. I'm going to hit the post office, mail out some sunglasses, and we're going to do the vlog today. This is about a comedian that everyone seems to love, but this is probably the saddest day in his life. But I'm going to tell you about how he took this sad tragedy and turned it into something beautiful. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, I filled up the Jackson's Victory Tour bag with uh, some sunglasses that need to go out, so we're going to head over to the post office because that's where I wanted to start the vlog anyway today, so let's head out. Oh, that looks awesome. I'll have to check that out. Shepherd Fairy um, art exhibit. Pretty close. I always love checking out this mural too. Nancy Sinatra. I got a weird glare over here. Let me see if I can get out of that. A little bit of food truck action in front of the post office. Let's get these mailed out. Josh will be coming home pretty soon. All right, off they go. All right, now let's go start the vlog for today. Today our vlog is about a tragic day in the life of the great Lou Costello, half of one of the greatest comedy duos of all time. Lou knew even when he was a kid he wanted to be a Hollywood star and told his mother someday I'm going to be a star and buy you a little white house in Hollywood. And he sure did. And let me tell you how that all happened. Now even at an early age he wanted to be a superstar, but he was so good at everything else that he got detoured a little bit along the way. When he was in high school, he set a state record for free throws. He um, later on went on to become a professional boxer for a short time. But he just always wanted to be a star in Hollywood. So he packed his bags and started migrating out here to Hollywood where he got a few jobs being a stuntman. Getting very little acting work and not really seeing his future in stunt work, he decided to start hitchhiking his way back to the East Coast and on his way stopped and got a job as a comedian in a burlesque club. Now it's this job as a comedian where he would excel and he would also fall in love with the love of his life. He would meet a woman who was a dancer there in the burlesque um, review, I guess like the lineup. They would fall in love and four months later they'd get married. Now as he got better and better at comedy, eventually Bud Abbott would see him perform, love his clean style of comedy, and schedule a meeting where they would discuss becoming a comedy duo that would pretty much change the face of comedy. Well, Diane Warren's written about every song in the radio for the last, I don't know, 30 years. Now, Abbott and Costello had a great act. They had a natural chemistry, a perfect timing, and if you've ever seen Who's On First, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, when I was in a elementary school talent show, a friend of mine and I did Who's On First as our talent show gimmick, our, our act, 
And um, I've always just loved that act in particular because it's so clever. Now, they went on to perform um, guest appearances on radio shows and then were awarded a contract and almost overnight in their first movie became a success and that would start a string of uh, pretty successful comedy movies including them in the Navy or them in the military and them performing with Universal Monsters. Well in 1940 something completely unexpected would come along and almost derail everything for Lou Costello's life. He would end up contracting rheumatic fever and would be confined to a bed for six months to a year. He would also, at this point, have just had his third child, Lou Jr., who he called Butch. Now, during this time that Lou would be sidelined and recuperating and suffering through this fever, he would receive a lot of fan mail from young kids who were also suffering through this, giving him encouragement, and he was so flabbergasted by this that he would actually personally reply to as many as possible. Now when Lou Costello would finally be ready to come back to work and perform at the radio show over at NBC Studios, tragedy would strike that day, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Oh yeah, don't forget, tomorrow's Record Store Day. There's the Cinerama Dome. Now I know I've shown you this intersection of Sunset and Vine before, especially when we talked about the original location of Paramount Studios. When they filmed the very first feature-length movie, there was a barn in Paramount, well a barn that they filmed it at right there that started Paramount Studios and they eventually took over this whole block and once Paramount moved out, this location became NBC Radio and this is where our story takes place today. Lou Costello's first day back at NBC Radio. Before he arrived to the studio this day, he told his wife that he wanted her to keep little Butch up for the night because he wanted him to hear his father on the radio. While Lou had been recovering from the fever, he and little Butchie would play with some toys that had musical instruments and little sound effects to them and apparently Lou was going to use them in the show that night. Shortly after he arrived here to rehearse that day's show, his manager got a call saying that little Lou, Lou Jr. Butch, had somehow worked the slat loose on his crib while his mother was at the, uh, the store shopping and the maid didn't see it. He somehow snuck out of his crib, walked out to the pool and fell in the pool and went unnoticed. Sadly, little Lou, Butch, died two days before his first birthday. Lou Costello left the studio, went home, and tried to console his wife, and then told her, I'm coming back to the studio and I'm going to do that show tonight. I promised little Butchie he was going to hear me, and wherever he is and wherever God took him, he's going to hear me tonight. And he performed that show here tonight without saying, what had happened. Now it wasn't until they wrapped up the show at the end of the night when Bud Abbott came on and mentioned what had happened and why Lou Costello had insisted on doing the show and Lou Costello took this sadness and turned it into something great. Lou took this experience and decided to start helping people. When he would read a story in the newspaper about someone who had had some sort of tragedy that didn't have the money to afford an operation, he would contact them, fly them to a hospital and pay for their operation. In one case, he had a spinal surgery done so that a man was able to walk again, and when that man was able to walk, he ended up 
working at the hospital that they did the surgery at. He would do things like that. He would use his money to finance recreation centers for kids like he as a youth who want to play basketball and want to play sports and even put in a pool for people that wanted to learn how to swim so that no one would ever drown again. What a great humanitarian Lou Costello was. Now though, he and Bud Abbott were a great comedy team. They didn't really get along all that great. They weren't really that close of friends, to be honest. They had a lot of disputes over money and mainly business arguments and would eventually separate. Lou would end up becoming a Vegas performer, sometimes opening for Elvis. Sadly, Lou Costello would end up dying of a heart attack and his wife would join him nine months later. Let's get a refill on the juice, huh? All right, we're done. All right, I just got word that Jaw is on his way home. So let's uh, hightail it home. Now another day in the future, we'll go to his grave and his wife's grave and we'll talk more about his film career there and why his name was actually Cristello. He changed it to Costello. And who did he name himself after? Oh, cool, Solax is here. I honestly haven't heard anything new they've put out since like 1999 or something. I have their first record and I always loved it when I was in high school, but I haven't heard anything since. I honestly didn't even know they were still around. All right, I'm home. I just, uh, I went out and took the car for a spin. I just, I had this weird feeling, you know how it is, that like once you've d had problems with something, you're just like, gosh, I just, I just want to I just want to know it's okay so I just finished up uh, eating and I said you know what let me take it for a spin around the block since we got it fixed yesterday I literally just got it fixed and drove it home yesterday and it felt okay so took it out for a spin today for about 15 minutes it feels better than ever it feels perfect it's idling perfect it's accelerating perfect I think our troubles are over man I am so happy to hear that we don't have to worry about that anymore. Whew. Now, Josh should be on his way home any minute. Perfect timing too, because I pre-planned a vlog. I made an appointment for something tomorrow that we're gonna vlog, and I did it about a month ago. So, I didn't wanna have to miss this, and now I'm absolutely confident that my car will make it there to do it. And then Monday, we have another monster heavyweight vlog. I'm just trying to pump you guys up because the day that I release them, I am hoping that you guys will all be as excited as I am to get to go see these places. <clears throat> I said excited! And to quote this guy, my car is finally back to being tip-top Magoo. Well, look who's home! I heard you went to two parks today with Pollyanna. You had a blast, didn't you? Well, I'm certainly happy to see you. Well, good evening, my friends. I'm going to call it a night. Hope you guys enjoyed hearing the story about Luke Costello. Even though it was an extremely sad story, pretty interesting to see what he did with it afterward. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, go to the description below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night, and goodbye. <laughs>